Hello everyone, it's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabe Brown. As always, I have my lovely co-hosts here with me. Hi, ladies. Morning. Hello, Why are you all smiling? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to just sneeze a second ago. <laughs> um, Nima. 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 How are you doing? Well, I miss Nima. <laughs> Nima is yeah. It was a busy week, a weekend for me yeah. last week. My son and myself were under the weather. We thank God. And in the midst of all that, I still wait your view fans. If I shout out now, they will see me my legs shout out. <laughs> 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 but I have to, because this woman has been in your view fans since the beginning. Oh, right. Yeah. Imagine her sharing all the banter. She knows everything everything about each of us from our banter. Oh. How is your husband? And your baby, six months bed rest. Oh, my <laughs> husband. And the twins. The other one, she, she loves your view. She's oh. a diehard. Those are the kind of fans we should celebrate. Because right. I was shocked that... She was giving me gist of everybody like that. Oh, and okay. um, I forgot that's her great. name. Yeah, <laughs> Jumi, how you doing? How <laughs> regards to her? I'm excellent. I, I met a few fans of your view yesterday also. So Tell me about it. You know, it's every day. It's, go, it's good to um, know your worth. Mm. It's good and to also get... Cry. Eh? Somewhere close to tears. Almost saying this, so you're like, okay. <laughs> It's, it's good to also um, be humbled, you know, sometimes by the um, weight of the responsibility on your shoulders, the amount of people listening to you that are being right. mentored from yeah. afar by you. Thanks, you mentioned that because um, <clears throat> I had to correct yesterday. Mm. We totally goofed mm. on the... Um, the CRK issue. It was, it was a bit embarrassing well, to find Christian out. It's the Christian Association that um, really goofed uh, and well, led us astray. Yeah, they led us astray, but we should have also researched further yeah, to see true. the fact that we were wrong on um, our hot topic yesterday, which we'll address a bit Today. later, but it's important to know that we, we accept responsibility because people listen to us. Yeah, very true. And they true. listen to us very, very closely. Very and um, yesterday, our position on the CRK was completely wrong. Um, but how are you doing, Ua? I'm very well, thank you. You know, talking about how important it is that what we do you know i just realized that you know the day we talked about um the evans story you know because his crime somewhat is measurable mm -hmm. so it's okay for everybody to lash on right. and say oh he's done this he's done that but you see when we have people um stealing public funds you know because you cannot measure how many people have died yeah. you've not measured how many people have lost you know their sanity you've not you've not measured as anything. a result of that money as a result of all those missing funds especially for the ins in insurgency this insecurity and all right. that Very so you true. cannot measure it so that's why you, you will not understand the gravity well we can but you, you can't measure no, no, the no. direct effect that's what i'm saying you cannot measure it so you you can't understand it so you you i mean so when we say you know the fight for corruption i think you know Every Nigerian should eat, live, breathe that because it is for the better um, good of every other right. person. Okay. You know, I just thought to mention that. It's mm. important. But right. you know that that fight for corruption also <laughs> does not excuse us giving strict punitive measures no, for no every crime mm. right. as a deterrent. Yes. Let it cut across. You know, we're saying the same thing mm. actually in different <laughs> ways. All right, cool. That's nice. Um, so. Sexually Confident Women is working up this weekend, I think. Yes, yes. So, so, so yeah, yeah, the chief organizer. Hey, chief is the planner. Hey, so, we're excited hey, about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm organizing my clients. Uh -huh. Better go and arrange yourself and somewhere. <laughs> we can only talk to me by Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break now. When we come back, we'll look at the front pages of the news. People stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. All right, we're going to start with the punch. FG appeals, says Saraki's acquittal unreasonable. Mm. Uh, houses, churches, vehicles oh, yeah. submerged by Ibadan flood. Akiolu in court again, battle suit to dethrone him. EFC grills former army chief Minima detains ex minister Akinjide. Amechi knocks Wiki, calls Rivers governor a thug. Lagos Kano Railway ready by December, says Amechi. <laughs> Arms. Man arrested as five Castina kids die in Stampede. Mm. Mm. 
Nigeria loses 140 billion naira weekly to Ababa says uh, Aliko Nigeria Dangote. Hey, whoa. I'm just joking. Aliko <laughs> Dangote. <laughs> I'm just joking. 1.2 billion dollar loan. GT Bank access others get 45% stake in Etisalat hmm. and are bothering elected chairman African Media Initiative Board. Hmm. The human angle, this stampede, hmm. what happened? Yeah. Who read that story? So this, uh, you know, we're in the Ramadan period. This is when Muslims love to give because of the doubled reward you get for it. And this man was giving 500 naira per child. And imagine, just before breaking of the fast, when the children are weak, they started mm -hmm. fighting over each other to get it. Five of them lost their lives and 15 were right. injured yeah. over this um, um, stampede. And they, there was an arrest made. Right. And I don't know what it will you be know, punished for. If this is so, totally... Um, almost blameless for him. This is poverty. You know, if that's he, he where intend, I was coming from, if you intend. go to the north, that's why it's manslaughter. <laughs> if you go to the north, you still see, you know, in he Lagos, we have big boys beggars here. Because mm. if you give them five naira, ten naira, they'll be looking at you like, <laughs> what is this? But in the north, you know, those children, the Almajiris, they still collect, you know, five naira, ten naira, you know, all those things. So, so for you to like here, naira that you are collecting five hundred naira for this thing, of course. So uh, my, the point I wanted to draw, you know, next time if you want to do these things, because we know that it's part of Ramadan for you to give. But you see, there's a decent way to do it. I was at my tailors in Magodo. They had arranged all of them. You line them up nicely. And if they understand from day one, you educate them that I'm going to give, it's going to get to everybody. everybody. I don't no think anybody rushing. will, anybody will wow. do that stampede. You see, it is, the style, to to yeah, it is the style of giving yeah. here. Yeah. Right. You just okay. feel because I want to give you something. Come and rush and take it. Let us okay. do it. Even dignity in giving. It right. has happened before with a politician in Kwara right. State. Yes, so I remember that. that story. Moving on to the nation. EFCC grills ex-army chief minima over arms deals. Access Bank others may take over a Tisalat. Mm. Oshimbajo, ethnic confrontation is not a game. And you cannot believe the picture of submerged buildings, hmm. cars, houses by flood. Uh, in Hibadon. Goodness, who read that story? Read that story. Uh, did you not even see Lagos State only yesterday? Yes. I read that story and ah. some of some some of the areas I think they said the, the rain started around five AM or something to mm -hmm. the next day around nine AM. Right. Some places the, the rain woke, started late yes, late at night. Right. And they woke up in the morning. Some people had to go and climb on top of their, their rooftops. They were looking for high ground areas to go and stay there. Look at the cars according completely the, submerged in water. According to the report, the Areas were mostly areas around the river, the river banks, area. and particularly that Gukpa River was lastly dredged by Bola Ige's time. Back in 1980. We right. cannot continue to say we are not preparing for flood when we have our what's that agency again that talks about weather? Uh, National uh, Oceanographic. Always warning about floods threatening to happen. Look at what these people went through. If somebody had just done his job, dredge, prepare for the f uh, rains coming. That's all. And these rains seem like, like Clear consistent. This rain, rain of, those, those of that this year. Flood yes, and yes. Yeah, those consistent rain. 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 Clear National Adrenaline Oceanographic is. had been warning us since Simple. January. Mm. In Lagos also, that expect flood this no, year. No, but Lagos have been doing, they've been doing a fantastic job. Because if you go around um, drainages, what has been happening? I've been right. seeing, if you go even on UC or maybe ah, Keja yeah. Road, you'll right. see all the, the they've, they cl they've cleared all the clogged right. gutters. Right. Lagos flood on Osho Dabapa Expressway, and the very next day, it rained this, even worse than the day before, and we didn't have flood Flood, again. because they had because cleared the, had the, the, the drainages. Yes. Moving on to Vanguard. Quick notice, no going anywhere, Ndigbo vows will deploy agencies of government against those threatening Nigeria's unity, says Oshimbajo. Ohaneze youths write UN seek protection. Referendum IPOB attacks Oshimbajo and Okorocho wants Erewa youths. We are yet to make arrests, says police. Interesting. Mm. Picture here again of the gridlock in the Papa Ushodi uh, Expressway. Uh, Lagos kidnapped day 28th. Mm. Abductors refuse to talk, to talk over after the 10 millionaire ransom. Nigeria loses 140 billion naira to Apapa gridlock weekly, says Aliko Dangote. Hmm. Two trillion naira bad loans. CBN unveils framework for Amcon. And father changed 13 year old son hmm. over 2,000 naira. Oh. That, that was story. a very, 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 very sad story. story. You will see the picture of the boy. Handcuff oh. chain. And they said there were hands. marks of um, blood stains all over oh. his body. It was the neighbors that actually saw it and said, This man. Before you go and this boy will die, you know, they had to report the case to the police. The, the mm. father has been arrested and has been charged um, to court, but the boy is receiving treatment um, somewhere. He was alleged that he stole 2,000 naira. And the, the, I mean, the question oh, is, first of all, 
as, I, I, I already believe that for the boy to have stolen 2,000 naira from you is already failed parenting in action. The, the, then number two, it now happens like this and you just think the only solution to stopping or helping him overcome that um, stealing, uh, stealing habit. habit is to change the boy. The ah. picture in the book, show, in the new paper showed the boy naked on the, on the, be, on the bare, bare floor. floor. Yeah. And oh. exposing him to health issues like that because you want to punish him oh. is if, if can take a cane, strike him, and you know punish Even him this weather, and Nima. let him go. Hmm. This dehumanizing treatment is not the first time, according to the neighbors. Right. I would say yeah. it's not the first time he does that over. And this but particular he goes, time, he put a padlock. Mm. He goes on back the to poverty because the man himself is frustrated. Only hurt people hurt others, so mm -hmm. he himself has issues that he's Mariah, dealing with. Yeah. You remember that parent that the child stole a bar? And a goosey soup. Mm. What punishment was meted to them? You know, when you punish such crimes, you deter other people. That's what we keep saying. Okay, moving on to daily son. Parenting is not just uh, I have a child and right, then do though. it by default. Right. Um, <sighs> go home order to Igbo. Arewa youths must be arrested, says El Rufai. Oshimbaje urges northern traditional rulers to condemn hate speeches. Ohaneze youth unfold demands. Obaseki nominates 18 commissioners. Job losses loom as banks take over a tea salad. Mm -hmm. Five hour rain wrecks havoc in Ibadan. Nigeria loses 140 billion naira to a proper gridlock. Weekly says Dangote <clears throat> and Obiano and making of a uh, new Anambra. So, the Etisalat story, who has that story? I have the Etisalat story. Um, so, a, a consortium of 13 banks right. have taken over the um, um, Nigerian shares of Etisalat, 45%, and the, the, their shares are supposed to be managed by a company, you know, representing this consortium. But the, so this happened on Friday. Right. Uh, the the Etisalat's um, director came out and said that we're unable to meet our loan um, responsibility 1.2 right. billion, billion dollars. 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 Yeah. No, we're but unable to meet and so they, they agreed to give up, give out their shares to this bank. Now the NCC has come out that based on the NCA, the Nigerian Commission Act, which says that no telecommunication license can be transferred to another owner, this company Representing this consortium of banks led by Access Bank cannot take over a uh, Right. So, that's so they have, because yeah. I want to say that they still have some legal issues that they, yes. they are sorting out. So it's not completely taking over right. yet. This Arewa Youth Matter. Um, <laughs> the El Rifa is insisting that they gather these guys and, and arrest them. And the police is still saying, We don't know where they are. But we, we see them still talking <laughs> on television. <laughs> and we hear that they are still writing letters to the, to the acting, acting president. president. I love the fact that um, the head, leader of the Igbo traditional rulers in Kaduna visited the governor and said that they are not leaving we by 1st of October. We don't have anywhere to go. They, they, no, they are not, not because they don't have anywhere to go, but because they believe that they are one Nigerian, that they've exactly. invested in the region exactly. called the northern region exactly. today, and that they can't just be sent out of and the acting region. president has tried to appeal but, to the northern leaders also to yes. talk to these people. Mm. Yes. Right. But it's important that when a person makes seditious comments and, you know, is, that person is punished to deter others from making such comments in the future. Exactly. Whoever it is, Igbo, Aosa, Yoruba, whoever, from whatever, whatever angle, they must be brought to book so right. that so. these kind of things will not be encouraged. All right, let's move on to Daily Times. A T-Slot pulls out of Nigeria. Budget alteration issue of going to Supreme Court delegate, says AGF's aid. Nigeria loses 140 billion naira to a proper gridlock weekly, says Aliko Dangote. Frozen account, fire shift floors EFCC at appeal court. Anti graft was Senate to pass resolution against Mago. And don't take Nigeria's diversity for granted, Oshimba tells agitators. So I think it's only right that they, are, they have decided to fix the Apapa. Um, road Should because you? when we hear figures like this for any economy that wants to grow True. that should have been your most your, your, priority. your priority your number one you know concern that to make sure that that activity does not it doesn't uh, cripple down businesses because he was complaining that even um, some of his um, <coughs> locations because they have to move things from the upper part, um to, to to i think to lokoja and some of his locations they are running on a 40 percent uh, what's it called yes. um a capacity right now they can't run 100 percent capacity because of, of the uh, bad, of the bad and in relation to that um the minister of transport uh, mm. Amici. Amici Amici. has said that the lagos canal railway should be ready before the end of this 
house here. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that should decongest some of the, the roads, roads and yes. all the roads. So which is what we've been begging for. 350 billion for capital projects. Do port road, do yeah. railway yeah. concurrently, yeah. Okay. and you know, let's yeah, free the economy. Exactly. So let's, we can't move, we can't take this day, but let's just read the headlines. This day, NCC steps in, says a Tisalat license not transferable. Again, Oshibajo warns FG won't condone threats to citizens' lives. Amber the demands return of federal assets in Lagos. An I and E FX window may stop Nigeria's demotion from MSCI index. That's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, <clears throat> who should instill religious values in children, the schools or the parents? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So the Federal Ministry of Education has debunked the reports that the Christian Religious Knowledge, CRK, has been removed as a subject uh, of study from the curriculum of public secondary schools in Nigeria, while Islamic Religious Studies, IRS, has been reintroduced. The Director of, the, of Press, Federal Ministry of Education, Mrs. Chinenye Ihuma, said that the ministry had designed a new subject which merged civic education, that's CRK, IRK, and social studies into religion and national values. So we ask, so that, that, that debunked our conversation yesterday. yesterday yeah. But our question now is, should uh, CRK be compulsory in schools? Should even religious knowledge at all, religious mm -hmm. education be compulsory? And who should be responsible mm -hmm. for instilling religious values in your children? Should it be from home or the schools? It's your view, call us on 070-8066801. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweet. So from what we've found out now is that CRK, RK are no more subjects on their own. They're now being merged. Are we somewhat seeing what's happening in the West where gradually religion is gradually taken to the background? No, it's, it's no more at the forefront because it used to be pretty important back then. But now if we're merging it as a theme yeah. within another subject, do you, is, that, is that the right way to go? Or do you think that the school should actually still ensure that um, religious studies regardless of which religion, is still being taught in schools um, properly. I, I personally think it shouldn't be taken out of our curriculum because I benefited from it. I remember as a child um, going to a Christian school. Right. I only learned one religion until I got to secondary school and I was taught Islamic studies. And Islamic studies for me, the way it was taught in the curriculum was a very extensive. And in, it's a professional thing. It's not something just anybody will teach off the shelf. It's something that involves a bit of knowledge of the language of the, of the religion, a bit of knowledge of the history of the religion, not extensive knowledge of the history of the religion. Do you understand? And the, the history of the Quran, the, the, the religious book. Right. So I don't understand how just anyone, would, when you merge it into civil education, for instance, it will simply be a mention so where someone teaching it will just simply be saying, okay, there's a religion called this, there's a religion called that. Not you necessarily, understand? not necessarily. They'll still, they'll still talk about it in depth. Most but not, likely. Yeah, okay, most likely. Most likely because now the person teaching it not, don't, doesn't necessarily have to practice. Doesn't faith. necessarily have to have in depth, depth knowledge. knowledge of the faith. You know, you, know, understand? you know why the person doesn't necessarily have to have in depth knowledge? Because the new subject is called religion and national values, which comprises of Christian religious studies, Islamic religious studies, civic education social studies and security education right all in one subject so you can be a muslim you can be a christian you will you take all of them Most as one. now because nigeria is a secular state and because religion is such a sensitive issue and we have seen how it has caused um problems or challenges in the past in our educational institutions mm. I would say rather than merge them in a way that doesn't work for either religion, 
Because when this was done in 2015 by the Jonathan government, <coughs> both the Islamic scholars and the Christian Association came out and said, no, we don't want this. Leave our Islamic studies the way it is. Leave our CRK the way it is. We want our children to learn our values. But all of us have forgotten that. Plus the religion, in plural, plus the foreign languages are all foreign to us. We have left the one that is really our own, right. that our parents practice, that, not informed, not our, not our parents, our parents that informed our culture. Morayo, the culture of our parents right. was based on the religion of their own grandparents. But going, going to the extent that if I know that Shongo is going to strike me down today, I will not steal government money. Right. If I am swearing by Shongo, I will not steal government money. Right. But the borrowed religion, you kuku do not have the in-depth knowledge Very of merciful. it. You know, you say, eh, forgive, forgive. So all of us will swear by Bible, swear by Quran, and, still and still. continue stealing. Now, thank you for taking us there, because going about the moral decadence in our society today. Regardless of the, churches and mosques yes. everywhere. So somebody can say, who religious religion help? Like, well, I mean, that's, like, but that's where we are. So, in, in, <laughs> we, so the, the point is that, do we need to focus on religion in schools, or do we ensure our parents teach us these things? But going back to what Nima actually rightfully said, who has that time? That's why the schools come in to give you that in-depth knowledge of your, of your, of your religion. Let, let me say to you that I still strongly believe that religion should be taught in schools because, first of all, it, it, you're educating the minds of the children. And I'm, I, I said it yesterday. I'll, I'll reiterate it today. The tolerance that I have today for other religion or the, the Islamic, Islamic, Islamic religion. religion was because, first of all, I was exposed to all kinds of school. There was a school that I went to. I had to cover my hair because the this, this school is a purely, Sheikh Abaka Gumi College is purely an Islamic school. It's even named after a, a, a Sheikh. So this, but it did not change who I am as a Christian. But it helped me to understand the values. So if a Nima is talking, I understand where she's coming from. Right. The intolerance that we are facing today in this country is because some people are misinforming or miseducating the younger generation. So they don't understand that you need to appreciate where this person is coming from. Right. So I think it is very key that they continue to teach religion in, this, in, in, um, in, in, in schools. As a subject. As a subject. Not so merged. that both, no, let them merge it. Right. Let everybody, because right now, they said some schools that have opted out not to teach this RVN, those schools, because I was talking to my friend yesterday, she, she, she understands different schools. Those schools already, they have a 20% a um, um, deficit on their markup of what they can attain as max. So there are schools, purely Christian schools, I won't mention their name, that have said that they don't want RVN in their curriculum. Hmm. But you see, the international schools, you know, have the RVN in their curriculum. So they are able to get that 100%, you know, markup for whatever um, percentage that they're getting in school. Because when you even travel outside of this country, you know, your children will be exposed to Buddhism, they'll be exposed to whatever. They will teach them everything. It is not so, I think, the, the, the question you asked about whose responsibility is it to instill the, the religious, religious values, you know, in the child still remains in the home. It remains in the hands of the parents. But you know? I don't think the RVN is going to merge it such that everybody must teach, learn all the religion. I believe, I thought you choose it's according no, to... No, 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 no. no. You, you, have to learn, you have to learn everything. Right. Including security so if you, education. Yeah, so if you don't want to... Sorry, if you don't want to... If you don't want the child to learn about that, you can completely take it out of the curriculum. But it okay. means that... Producer is correcting me saying that they're not learning everything. You get to choose. You don't the, get to choose. That's what the producer is telling no, me. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Jumake. Okay, anyway. I'll go no, back to you that. You don't the get to choose. Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Educational Research right. and Development Council, a parastatal of the Federal Ministry of Education, who um, were the ones who came up with the curriculum in 2015, made it seem like it's now just one subject. It, it is, is one, one subject. But so why was Khan whipping so much sentiment exactly. so much on this matter? Because that, 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 that was a problem I need to for us the yesterday. When yes. I read the reports that you, know, you guys read yesterday, I felt whenever it is necessary right. for a group of persons to you know, whip up sentiment, to, 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 to forge their ideals. Right. It is wrong that, you know, they, they do it in a way that it is not balanced. Right. It is very, extremely important that Khan does not unnecessarily right. cause the friction that we had. Right. A lot of people that read, the, 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 that saw the show yesterday that called me, felt, no, it was one-sided. And it was unfortunate because we did it to the other side. Respond? And we were, based on, we were basing it on what we thought was the, the situation. And it was just a one-sided uh, right. okay. issue brought forward. So Khan assumed that when the um, neck 
uh, the National Education Council was bringing back Arabic studies yes. that they were because Arabic is the language of Islam that they were bringing back <laughs> Islamic studies. So it was an error on their side. Now I wanted to say that we are arguing over foreign languages. Right. So should so so that you will be tolerant of the traditional worshipper. Should we also introduce Ifa studies Social into studies our? Let, Let me take this call. Let me take this call. <laughs> David, are you still there? Yeah, I'm there. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Yeah, my name is David. Yes, David. Yeah, how are you? Go ahead, please. Thank you. Yeah, I don't want to appreciate Jumoke Alawade for her view. Secondly, I want to appreciate her here, beautiful style. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank right. you very much, David. Yes. I, let me help Jumoke. When we had the Fab guest here, he was talking and I felt in touch with him. I understood what he did. I understood because I read Yoruba from primary one to SS3. Right. As a language. As a language. Right. In studying Yoruba, I studied all the Ifa gods, the Shongo, if right. and my, yes. Ifa, my own poetry was on Yeshu. Right. Uh -huh. And I had to act it in school, right. me and Imam's daughter. Right. So, <laughs> you know, exposing you us to every option. That's in the important. language. Now, you see where the Christian association are now coming from. It is in your Christian Arabic language, language right. you may even now learn about Islam. That is it. But it, we don't have Latin, Latin which, which is the language of, of the Christians. Christians. Gotcha. Latin faded away because of lack of expertise. It wasn't because it, it wasn't an option in the curriculum. Check right. the curriculum. Right. It's still an option. Just like Edo languages was an option in Lagos. Right. But lack of teachers to teach it is why right. I did Yoruba. Right. So maybe that's, so why, that's, why, that's why Khan was that's saying what, that you shouldn't put the You can't Arabic. just expunge an international language. It is an option. Just like I wanted to say that. Instead of taking out um, both religion from the, the, the curriculum, why not leave it as an option so that a child who is exposed to a particular religion and wants to study it for that has the option of getting it studied in Even school? Even this RVN, right, from the report, it is only between, yeah, let's just, okay, let me say the GSS1. GSS1 to GSS3 that is compulsory for them to learn. From SS is optional. Do you understand? So it's not something, it's when just you, for you, them to understand the basics of this religion. Right, right now, this call. Okay. I have this call. Um, Omar Shale, are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Yes, I'd like to say that issues like these are quite sensitive, all right? Yes. But I teach and have a child. The problem I usually have is that when a child is growing up, I want my child to know that Chia Amaka is a Christian, okay? And she goes to the church on Sunday, she reads the Bible. We have this problem of somebody does not even have the right information of another's religion. Yes. I teach RVN. I have a student I teach personal, I teach RVN. Now, how RVN introduces a child to the basics of, okay, the Muslims go to mosque, yes. they fast during this mosque. Do you understand? Yes. Why can't we come together and say, okay, what we are trying to bridge is unity. Thank you. Such that my child knows, okay, this is Adamu, and Adamu does this, Adamu eats this, Adamu does not eat this. It's not really about the religion. Oh, I'm a Muslim Thank woman, and much. I believe that the first I place a, a child learns is off. at home. In fact, the mother. Omar Shalewa, who is going to teach um, Chika that uh, Eshubu me Now, the Ifa, um, so the let me address it, the Ifa issue. There are questions like, the god of iron is Dash. Yes. Right. Okay, like that's exactly. we have to rush on. God, Godfrey Abel says, the merging is a smart one. It will create the, the, this unity we seek. We are too religious in this country. Oh. Okay, that's all we can take on this subject. Hopefully, we've locked it down once and for all. That's all we can take. Let's take a break. When we come back, being a widow in Nigeria, stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we have seen and heard how widows are being maltreated at the death of spouses in Nigeria. In some cultures, actually, women are seen as, as mere chattels and therefore lack every right to inherit any property when their husbands die. According to customary laws, a woman is still considered as part of properties, the man which can even be inherited. Now, to commemorate the International Widows Day, which is scheduled for Friday, we celebrate today with the widows. Joining us is the founder, God's Wives International, Ayo Yemisi Jayola. Yes. 
and the Executive Council, God's Wise International, Taiwo Oluyomi Adejima. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thank Those of you that don't know, Auntie T used to be a member of Your View. She used yes. to be a lady of Your View. Yes. Until she disappeared into thin air. <laughs> but good to have you back, Auntie T. Thank you, Mariah. So, um, you can call us on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect, please. Hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. So, every year, there's a celebration of um, International Widows Day. What, 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 on June 23rd. On June 23rd. Now, in the past year, what do you, would you, how effective mm. has these um, celebrations been for widows across board? And we would also like you to share with us your experience as a widow in Nigeria, because before I even get to the celebration part, the average widow in Nigeria doesn't get a support system. Mm. So how have you managed, how have you fared since the demise of your spouse? Let me start with um, Mrs. Jayola. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, widowhood, first of all, it's um, a situation. You find yourself in it. Nobody calls or makes a phone call. Nobody says, I want to be this, mm. unless the husband had been sick and it's been managed, so yes. anything can happen. Yes. Okay, for the past years, being a widow, it's been a managed mm. lifestyle. Mm. No widow ever gets out of it. Mm. For as long as you are in, you are in for life, unless you remarried. Mm. Now, for the past seven years, uh, United Nations mm. endorsed the celebration of World Widows Day mm. all over the world by Lumba, initiated by Lumba Foundation. Oh, yeah. Lumba Foundation asked for it and the UN accepted. So it's the normal thing every year all over the world that widows should be celebrated June 23rd. We do not know why the date, but we know we have to do this every year. Right. Okay. Now, in Nigeria, mainly God's Wives International by Serendipity has made it very, very important that June 23rd, every widow should be celebrated. Dance with yourself. Eat what you want. Wear your best dress. Mm -hmm. Do anything without fearing that you'll be arrested. Because, <laughs> because the only day is the only day that you can go to the public and say, I'm celebrating my situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I used to weep today. I want to Dance. dance. Well, as Joker said, Aya, is it an Aya situation? I mean, it's we, an Aya. It's an Aya. Yes. Because uh -huh. should we feel pity or do we yes. sympathize? Well, the exactly. pity is in the situation. Okay. Mm. It is Aya. My husband died nine years ago. Mm. And when people chat me on Facebook, they say, oh, Aya, sorry. I say, don't pity me. I've passed that stage. Mm. If somebody has to pity, I'll do that inside. Mm. I won't let people pity me outside. Okay because I can control it. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is let widows know that you are the winner. Two people standing, mm -hmm. someone fell. Mm -hmm. You are the, the L shape. I've always said it, L shape. You are the one standing. Mm -hmm. This is the man lying down. You are a winner. That means in the game of life and marriage, you won. OK? You don't need to live in the pity party thing. Mm -hmm. okay. um, most times when, uh, spou uh, when spouses die, they live the other person tending for couples, in, for the children alone. Mm. How has it been faring with children? I'm sure you have children. Mm. How have you been, you know, managing the situation with the kids? Actually, when it comes to parenting, sometimes it needs, you need both parties to be able to balance parenting. Okay. I wish I wouldn't mention this. When I was coming in, I wish this wouldn't come up. In the black Africa, it is a problem. When somebody dies, the woman needs to as, um, give herself the assignment to go on, moving on, taking care of whatever the husband left behind. In the black Africa, the widow is left to do 99% of it. Mm. Where people help you to train your children, it's luck. Some people helped me to pay my children's school fees. Yes, some people did. When I had problems, people, some people offered a house. Mm. You know, things like that. People come in, maybe 1% out of 100. We ask, what can I do for you? In the black Africa, in the Western world, when you become a widow, there is a support in Sister. place. Okay. You don't need to ask for it. Okay. 
And then in the black Africa, it is widows who come, gather themselves together and Each say, okay, Lama she, what do we do about this? This thing will kill us if we don't do something. That's why we have these organizations. Mm -hmm. I wanted to direct my question to Auntie Titi. <laughs> um, because <clears throat> now here I am, we're all um, still having our spouses and all that. And as she was talking about, this thing is not something you say you want I'm to cool. call and say, okay, I, I want it now. I want to become a widow now. Is, is there anything that is being done, even for women that are still in marriage, you know, preparing just in case of any event? I know we like to say, God because forbid. Because everybody will die, shall You know, because people don't like to live with, I mean, to, when, they, when you hear that, go and write your will. They say, God forbid, I'm not dying. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this God forbid syndrome that is not going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. And it now happens all of a sudden, you're feeling like, okay, what am I going to do? So is there something, even for the people that are married, you know, your husband might not be sick or anything. Is there any kind of um, 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 plan in place or for training. women, training in place of women that are already married, so that when you come into that yeah. situation, if it eventually happens, you know, you are, are better ready. Who plans ready? for yeah. such? But if you're no, but so, that's okay. the thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, a, it's a fantastic question because um, while we look after widows as carriers. We also have to think about those other women you've just mentioned. And of course, there's a big population in it. I studied law, but I, my vocation is no longer law. Mm. I'm passionate more about caring. Mm. I'm passionate about um, you know, business and enterprise. And what I've been able to do as a lawyer with, the law, with my legal background is now begin to talk one-on-one -on -one with a lot of women because you see, a lot of my friends sometimes, they take it so casually. You know, that unknown, women don't come to grabs with it. And I warn women a lot because some women are industrious. Mm -hmm. they're, enterpri and they're enterprising. They do things already. If their husband dropped dead today, they're okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. But how many women, I even like when they're working at a nine-to-five job, are really the ones prepared. prepared. Do they know what their husband really does? Do they mm. know what he has? Do they know what programs he's put together for the children? Do they know if their names are on the house he built and said it's theirs? Mm. Do they know what, what, you know, there's so much to right. learn. Mm. Yeah. That because in the Nigerian scene, yeah. we have this pretentious way yeah. of saying, well, I know my husband. Mm. Mm. I know I can, he will not do this or do that. What about the family you've, you're, you're married into? into? That is your husband's family. Yes. Are they going to accept you the same way they were accepting you when you were the queen mm. in Obviously. his life? That's mm. it. And you know, these are the situations you look, I take myself for example, because you said we should also try to, we always have to go on a memory lane. Mm. Right. You know, when my husband died, I was a queen in his home. Everything was oozing. oozing. Mm. Things were done with people looking mm. at coming to first, madam. Mm. And then my husband dies. And everything becomes, let's teach her a lesson. Mm. 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 Let's see how far she's going to go. Oh, she, she be, I'm used sorry for be. those. She be, she used to be uh, this, this, yes. and control so much. Oh, let's do it this way. Let's see what she's going to do. Hmm. But thankfully, you know, every woman today, I really, really would encourage and appeal to every one of us. There are some people doing an excellent job. In fact, except we also want to pretend there are a lot of women that are the ones carrying the house. True. Mm. Mm. Nowadays, you find out that a lot of women are the ones that are the breadwinners. Yes, right. But for those of us, the so ones that are kept, right. mm. the ones that have rich husbands, wealthy husbands, people who just, you know, you do everything is done for you. You don't even know where. Mm. You don't know how like deep is wife, in the, right. Let me come to the, Jumaki has a question. Um, so I was saying, based on your um, summation that really and truly there are some women who are breadwinners of their homes. There are some women who are empowered already. But when they become widows, they lose everything. Mm. So it's not for the lack of empowerment. But you don't see the same thing happening to widowers. So back mm, that's to... A good one. Yes. Yeah. So it comes back to this um, inequality. 
you know, how do we address the issues? Oh, gender in inequality. In I'll, I'll pause you and see when I come back. When we come back, we're going to continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back. So we're continuing the conversation because we want people out there to learn from your experiences. So I wanted Mrs. Jayola to share some experiences that you know about, or even of some of your experiences, anyone you want to, to experience. Let's even learn from that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Experiences doesn't lie with one person. Mm. Once you are widowed, the experience is the same. Mm. The grieving is the same. Mm. It's everything about that widow and you. Now, at the onset of widowhood, the first thing a widow gets at the onset, epele, sorry, pity, sorry, pity, yeah, call it pity. We call it epele, yeah, you know. Uh, and after the burial, you find yourself alone. I was afraid to come into my house after I buried my husband. Mm. I was up, I was afraid to to walk on the ground after the funeral because I was stepping on him. He was down there. Yeah. I was afraid to walk because I was knocking his head. You know, that was the feeling, the, the trauma, you know. And then walking into the home again, I found everywhere calm. Mm. People stopped calling. Ew. People stopped, stopped visiting. And then, well, because I've been taking care of widows for 21 years, I was used to seeing widows outside mm. we didn't look for them widows came to us mm. for care for help we did when this thing happened i had to say if i don't go and look for these 28 widows that we had i will mm. die let me go and acquaint myself with them so that they will be visiting me so i won't be lonely mm. and from 28 we're over six thousand now wow. Wow. now the 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 gender thing Yes. When a widow loses her husband, unfortunately, my husband and his lawyer were discussing one day in the clinic about women uh, being chattels and all that. Mm -hmm. I said, Killing, <laughs> what I mean? What do you mean? Yeah. They are property owned by men. Ew. Wow. My husband said, No, my wife is not my property. She's my partner. This is the man said, She is your property. And I found out that when he died, I found out that a widow is a property. She's a chair that could be shifted from here to there. Yes, so. And then if she has a bad leg of the fall, they could throw it away. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't call a carpenter to mend that thing so that she won't be, you know, that is the situation. And the gender thing is a sort of disease in the black African society mm -hmm. that the woman doesn't feel confident anymore Mm. She does Even she loses friends. Uh, some of our relations that do well with her may even. So, sorry, Ma, sorry to cut you. This uh, statement about a woman being the chattel mm. in her husband's home is something that is not too far from our culture. Women are always lesser Excuse in me. our culture. Yes. I'm, I'm happy you are saying that. Black. Black. I'm black. happy you are when saying we, that. Too. Uh, let me get to my point. When we have uh, like a family setting, the women know their place. Mm. It's a woman's place. It's it wrong for a woman when the men are in council to have a, a say. Mm. Talk less of, even when it's a, a decision that concerns her and her children. And it's custom. Mm. And we've been silent over the years. Mm. So what's different when Yeah, Chattel, woman lesser. I had never been brought up to believe that a woman is lesser. Maybe around my culture, when I got married, I didn't live like a lesser person. It depends on the man. My husband, exactly. called, my husband told, he, he told me that it's the head, that without the neck, the head cannot stand. A woman has a lot of function in the home and in the life of the man. Now, chattel is the black African word, which has been accepted in the society at large. How do we change How it? How do we change it? Awareness. How do we change it? awareness and, and then also. thinking that that chattel, revisiting that position, that this same chattel 
does a lot in the family. Okay. Mm. I I take this call. Come to one. Thanks for calling. Are you there? Good morning, Mariah. David, are you there? Please, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Good morning. My name is Deji. Deji, go ahead. Um, actually, I don't know what people are talking about this one because I'm not on. But I just want, I want to bring something to your notice, Mariah. But, but by the way, I'm, the, I'm a first caller. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling, Deji. Yeah. You guys are doing a wonderful job. God bless you. I really appreciate you. You have guys. ten seconds, Deji. What was your comment? Okay. Um, I I know that um, Governor Bond is said that he always watches the blue every morning. Right. This is what I, I want to obey your notice. If you go to Lagos market, you take your phone to the market to buy something, and you call up to go and you carry the your load. On your way to your park. Unfortunately, you I can't. I can't hear. You. It's not He's very not clear. Yeah. Not yeah. You know, I want to ask a question because um. Widowhood uh, comes with different ages. Do you understand? Do you think um, the pressure she's talking about, because I've seen very young, widows. very young, my, my friend, I mean, less than a year, she no, got married, widowed, you know, and, you know, she's, she's not remarried, but because she's younger, you know, maybe it's easier for her to manage. Do you think age has anything to do with, you know, how the situation will turn out? You know, after the passing of one's hey, imagine spouse. that a widow that's yeah. even retired. Age, you know, age yeah. ha age has nothing to do with it. Okay. Loss and grief is the same. The same. No, I'm talking about but like in an terms afterlife. Of an afterlife. Yes. With a younger person, maybe she's had lesser time mm. in terms of family union. You know, when you marry into a home, mm. you become part, part of, of that of home. home. Yeah. And um, you do things according to the tenets of an Iyawu, mm. as we call it in the Yoruba. It's all about duty. It's all about duty. With a younger person, because she has not been cemented that much mm. right. in the system, it's easy to take out your leg. Mm. Right. You know? And you say, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it my way. Right, right, right. Also, a younger person has a longer time. Most likely, even if a young person who has had only one child. Yes. Unlike an older person who has six children, mm. and, grandchildren. and is wondering how in the world am I going to cope with this situation? So what is your, because we have to round up soon, so what is, what's your organization doing to help widows out there? Friday is the day of a celebration. Aside from going to dance and celebrating yourself as a widow, what is your group doing to help? What kind of support are you providing for widows out there? And, the, mess, the first thing I would say is not really just a time to dance because the dancing is starting from your room. Right. Mm. It's a time to come out on that day because I think it's the first time, but we are going to take an awareness work oh. from mm -hmm. Anchor events to the State House. Nice. Oh, wow. And we have called different organizations to join us. that are also doing the same work we're doing because we're not the only one doing it. There are many people out there doing a great job. Oh, nice. You know, and... If we all can go there, it will start a good awareness. Mm. Why for governance? We have the House of Assembly. We have the governance, that is the state. We think it's time for us to change laws. Mm. You know, mm. we we're talking about women, gender, and all that. Right. If we do such things, then it's easy for people to say, we're working. The gender it. equality bill is at the National Assembly. Let's <laughs> just push more for it. Joshua says, the widows who are determined will discover the strength they have within. My super mom is a great example. Omo Dafe says, I never see my wife as a lesser person. Rather, I see her as my companion and backbone. Okay. I take her advice 100%. The question is, does your family see her that uh -huh. way? No. So, if you want to know. So, you should have been laws. Yeah. The family, yeah. doesn't uh, see, no. family is very important. The family doesn't see the widow. Lucky. As but most the widows same. are not lucky. The yeah. family does not see the woman but as I the same. But I ask the pertinent question yes. of that. There, there's a woman who is even empowered herself. Yes. But once she loses the husband, the in-laws now come and say, eh, the house is our own. Eh, the, this, the children, oh, you did not even have a son. Eh, something. And push her out. And That's she, about 45, 50%. <laughs> but yes. it would never happen to a man like that. Even if he's living in his wife's house. house. Nobody will come and say, so what do we do to change that culture? Can I just chip in? Okay. Now, I was married to a priest who preached a lot about family life. Mm. We did family life education. And it is in the Bible that the two shall become one. After marriage, it's not. Mm. Mm. It's not. Wow. Huh. So the woman can. Mm. Unfortunately, we have to close. <laughs> but, um, so Friday, there's going to be a walk. 
Mm, yeah, yes. From, from um, Anchor House. Anchor House, House to House, the State House. Um, Hank, Anchor Events, Anchor which event. is in Agidingbi. Mm. It's starting, the work starts at 9 a.m., but we all have to be gathered. Oh, widows. Widows, widows, yes. Widows, widows and, supporters. We, and, and supporters. And supporters. But supporters Please. who don't have that. You know, think on them that oh, if I support them, I may become a widow. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, how are you faring? We have to close. How are you? How are you faring? And you have like, four done. boys, and I have two boys. Two boys, yes. and how are they doing? They're doing well. I mean, I have. They're not boys anymore. They're yeah, young men. men. Their yeah. children are grown. They're wow. grown up. They're they are great grown. support. You know, their children are grown. and they're good children. And yours? Well, okay, yeah, three of them. <laughs> they are doing very well. <laughs> we are doing very well. <laughs> Mrs. Jayela, the way yeah. you say we are yeah. okay. Yeah. We are okay. Yeah, it All is right. very good. <laughs> you have to decide what you want yeah. to be. That's all we can take on the show. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, so have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.